Dr. Perkins, thank you for coming here to this church and blessing us with your passion and uh, your vision. Uh, could you just tell the viewership a little bit more about yourself, uh, your father, your grandfather, your great-grandfather, you're an author, your speaker, your businessman? What are you not? <laughs> well, I want, let me say this. I'm really great to be at a church like this, a church that is dealing with and breaking down these racial and culture barriers and coming together to worship Jesus. That's, uh, this is a dream come true for me. I have to admit that we stand on the shoulders of men like you. Uh, you were the one who was out in the front breaking the hole that open so that we could walk through. Reconciliation is a real passion of yours, isn't it? It is, because it's uh, theological. It is what the gospel is about. It's the central message of the gospel. Man broke a relationship with God in the Garden of Eden, and the redemptive story is the reconciliation story and that that reconciliation process ended at the cross when he said it's finished and now man can be reunited back to God and to each other and that he have given us the ministry of reconciliation. So that's what it's about. Dr. Martin Luther King said that Sunday morning was the most segregated hour of the week and why is it that if this is so central that the church is so slow to get there? I think there's a limit to accommodating heresy. Okay. Uh, uh, and heresy has always been in the church from the very beginning. But I think accommodating slavery will be in America, given our constitution, what we know, what we knew at the time, mm -hmm. all men was created equal and is endowed by that creator with certain rights. Among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And then we bring over these slaves. Yeah. and accommodates that within the church. And, and that's the redemptive story, uh, the greatest pre-redemptive story that led to the redemption of the nation of Israel from Egypt. And now we then accommodate slavery and that you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free and all of that in society. I think, uh, boy, uh, the American Christian ought to be trying to seek for uh, a sense of uh, identity as the people of God. We, we have lost it. We should be thinking about what can we do to display our redemption. I, 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 I really doubt whether or not our repentance have been deep enough. You know, I, mm -hmm. I, I hear passages like, if my people that are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. I think our wicked ways have been the accommodation of, of racism within the church. When you read the book of Acts, you, 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 you read it in, in a matter of maybe an hour, but th that took uh, 30, 40, 50 years from the time Acts started from the ascension of Jesus all the way to Paul ending up in Rome but a lot happened and they finally were catching up and it took many more miracles and angelic visitations and Peter seeing a sheep coming down yeah. talking about him eating some shrimp and <laughs> crayfish things like that well yeah it was really it was really uh, uh, the Apostle Paul that really mm -hmm. was and that and they are uh, a church at any hour mm -hmm. it's where the intention of the rest of it was was almost God leading and by circumstances almost. But the Apostle Paul and Barnabas uh, uh, and that church at Antioch. But I, there's something significant too about the church at Antioch. It said it, 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 they called them Christian first at Antioch. And then it talks about it, the, the, the makeup of that church at Antioch. And what you had there was a makeup of an authentic church. And it said there was in the church at Antioch certain teachers and preachers. And all of those had, as you would call it, a nation right. uh, 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 indication there. They was of different nations. And so what you had there was the church triumphed, came together at Antioch. And it's from that then 
the, the Apostle Paul and Barnabas could go out now to the Gentile world. And of course, he called him on the Damascus Road. He was very clear that I've called you to send you far away to the Gentile to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to the power of God. Let me ask you something on a, on a personal level. Um, what is it that makes John Perkins really tick? My mother died of starvation. And I was, they said that my mother was nothing but skin and bone. And then I was skin and bone because I was uh, sucking her breath. And I probably was sucking out of her the life and the nutrition she needed for her own life. And that has become real to me more and more. And if she lived and I, she died and I lived. Wow. And that someday I will mm. face her. First, gratitude to her. But she could ask me, what did I do for people like her? I think that we all would like to say, and it's just like the Apostle Paul, he said he f fought a good fight, he finished the course. I, I would like for God to say to me, well done. You know, I want yeah. to be a, a faithful servant. What, what, what would you say if someone who's watching this said, I, I really want to uh, do some, something significant in the cities of America? Uh, where would they even, where would you suggest they even begin? I, I would think that they would begin with uh, mentoring some kids. Some of these young people that are being uh, locked in prison have some great talent yeah. and capability. Definitely. And I am afraid that we could eventually emerge see emerging from these urban communities our own form of al-Qaeda. Mm. People who are going to ask the question, how did the wealthiest nation, the most scientific nation, how did it neglect uh, people, so many people, and have them locked up in prison? And in reality, prison in the Bible is society's failure. Mm -hmm. uh, God never intended prison. Mm -hmm. And whenever he t sent us out, he sent us to not to forget the prison, That's those true. in bond. When he comes to the judgment, to ask the question is, did you visit the prison? And, and so prison is sort of like a, a check on the failure of our society. And now, right now, we have in America the richest, most creative nation on earth. We have the highest percentage of people in prison, of a population in prison, than any other nation. And we talk about our other nations doing civil rights abuse, human rights abuse, but that we have more people locked in prison. And so I'm afraid that the prison is going to be the place where our real problems because those people are not going to have no loyalty to America. America as we know it have failed them and they are locked up in American prison. That's why that so many of our revolutionaries uh, come out of prison. Most great leaders have spent time in prison because when they're in prison, they give up on the law that is. So back to your original thought, is it people who really want to get involved and do something need to get involved in mentoring? It's the direct way that we can pass on uh, these virtues that God has yeah. placed in us. And you said in particular young men. Particularly young men. I think you have, you, you've given us a fount of wisdom and I really once again want to say thank you for uh, being here and encouraging us, inspiring us, and imparting this. Thank you. Great to be here.